Math Problems That Unlock Student Thinking, Episode 584. Today's sponsor is the U.S. Toyota Dream Car Art Contest. Stay tuned at the end of this show to learn how students in the United States can enter this inspiring contest and get lesson plans to design a dream car that makes the world a better place. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're talking with Robert Kaplinsky, math teacher and author of Open and Middle Math Problems that Unlock Student Thinking. So Robert, is there a way to construct math problems that encourage learning? Yeah, I think that one of the things we have to focus on is really how students approach the problem. I think a lot of times we give students problems and in mathematics and expect them to solve it using a specific method. But I think it's really important to consider is really how they solve it. Uh, and the way to kind of frame that is by thinking about the beginning, the middle, and the end of the problem. Uh, an interesting kind of metaphor for this, if you think about uh, reality TV shows, you always know how they go, right? They always begin the same way with lots of contestants. They always end the same way with someone winning. The reason why you stick around is because you're curious about what will happen in the middle. And that's the point I think people have to realize. Uh, sometimes people pro call problems open-ended, but what I think is really important is to have an open middle. That middle is where lots of strategies will help students solve it. And you can have some really interesting conversations about how they solve it, even if they end up with the same ending, the same answer. Oh, that's fascinating. So when you say open middle math, you're not just talking about middle school. You're talking about math problems for any age. Yeah, really. They, they go from kindergarten through uh, college. And then it's, it's really just focusing on this idea of opening the middle, which is a term that I first heard from Dan Meyer, uh, who you had in the podcast earlier. But really just that middle part of the problem where there are many strategies, having multiple opportunities for ways you can solve it leads to such rich conversations with students. So there are some teachers who say, do it my way or else. So you're saying that there can be multiple ways to solve a math problem. We know, uh, truthfully, we know there are multiple ways to solve a math problem. The question is if we're going to let students do that. Yeah, I mean, and if you think about it, like from a, an elementary perspective, you know, some kid might uh, repeatedly add five plus five plus five plus five and another child uh, multiplies by five. And you can have a conversation like, is that even possible? Do they both work? Why would you use this one and not that one? What are the benefits of that? And, and it leads to really good conversations where students are constructing their own understandings from the problems. So you're trying to help kids understand math, not just do math? Yeah. I mean, if I, if I reflect on my own uh, upbringing, I was a really good math robot, right? I graduated from UCLA with a degree in math, but it wasn't until I was an adult where I realized, like, I don't actually understand any of the stuff that I'm able to do. I, I'm just repeating these steps that I've been given. And I think when we, we look back, unfortunately, that's not such a unique experience. So giving kids opportunities to really be problem solvers and think about uh, not only how to do the math, but why what they're doing even works. It, it's a shift from where we were coming from. So what do you think the biggest mistakes are that math teachers make? I don't know if I want to really frame it quite that way. I think that really just it's pretty darn challenging to be expected to teach in ways that we were never taught as students, uh, ways that really we weren't teaching 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. Uh, so I think that in terms of it, rather than framing on mistakes, I think what we really want to focus on going forward is how do what, what do we want from education I, well, from math education? I think that a lot of times we teach students skills that they will never use again, like I mean, when's the last time you multiplied or divided decimals by hand? I mean, I don't know if it's been decades for me. So I think that we really need to take a step back and think, like, why are we teaching what we teach? And, and while there's always way too much to teach in a year, maybe we can spend our time focusing more on things that students will actually be using uh, in real life. Yeah, and there's certainly, I mean, I teach digital film and we use a lot of math in digital film, calculating things that we were trying to accomplish or special effects. Or, I mean, there are real ways to use math. I'm just not sure they're happening in math class. So that's kind of part of what you're encouraging. Yeah, I, I think unfortunate reality is that uh, we're focusing on too much on what tests assess. And the problem is that tests are not really good at assessing what matters. Tests are really good at assessing what's easy to assess. And so it, it changes the focus of what we spend our time on. Uh, and I think that kind of getting back to real problem solving and not just robotically following notes uh, is what we really need to think about. Okay, so could you give me an example kind of from start to finish so that the math teachers and, and those of us who have math in our classes can kind of picture and understand the pedagogy of this? 
Yeah. So, so these problems are, are easiest to see when you have a visual representation in front of you and you can get those at openmiddle.com. But one example would be just like, think about the area and perimeter of a, of a rectangle. So a typical problem might be like you see a rectangle, one side has a side length of five and one side has a side length of seven. And they ask you, what's the area or what's the perimeter? Another approach might be just asking people, what are the measurements of a rectangle that has a perimeter of 25 units. And so then kids have to think like, is there just one answer? Are there multiple answers? And so then they start having conversations. Like you'll see some kids maybe will do side lengths of 20 and five. And so they, they have something going on where they know they have to add the side lengths, but they don't seem to understand it's not just those two side lengths. And so what you start to see is that you almost get x-ray vision where you can see that there are kids who would knock the socks off the first problem. But on the second problem, you start to see Ooh, okay. Wow. I didn't expect so many kids to have these kind of misconceptions. And so you, you sort of get kids can have conversations about, are there more than one answer? Are, are there multiple answers? Are there infinite number of answers? What is not an answer? What makes an answer? Okay. And so you have these conversations and it, and it can go from much more from there. Like you could ask students, what's the greatest area you could have on a rectangle with a perimeter of, I don't know, 30 units. And so it just leads to really interesting conversations about what is possible in a way that's not just jump into computation. So how does this, this look? You have, you know, small groups of students having, having these conversations, the teachers work in the room. I mean, certainly the teacher is not at the desk while the kids quietly work the problems. Yeah. So, so what I, what I recommend is first for teachers to uh, have solved the problem themselves and think about the many ways kids will get it right and wrong. Like a joke I make, that's not really a joke is if you get it right on your first try and you don't know how kids are going to get it wrong, you're in for a world of hurt because kids are definitely going to get it wrong when you teach the lesson. So it's good to know where they're going to get it wrong. But my favorite strategy in general is to use a single problem with the whole class and then do something like a think pair share. So I'll, I'll present the problem to students. Uh, I'll give them, you know, a couple minutes, three minutes, four minutes to work on it on them by themselves. Then they might talk about it with a partner or maybe a small group they're sitting with. And then we'll have a whole class conversation about uh, the various strategies and maybe have different kids come up and show how they approached it so that you can kind of tell a story about how it might be solved. So you've been in a classroom since 2003. If you could travel back in time to Robert Kaplinsky new classroom teacher trying to teach math, what would you tell him? You know, I, I meant well, but I was just using worksheets all the time. Like I didn't know any better. I was just doing what I was taught uh, or really the way I was taught math. Uh, and now I realize that a single open middle problem can replace an entire worksheet and kids love them. Like if you're on Twitter, check out the hashtag why open middle. That's one word. Why open middle? You'll see tweets from teachers saying that like their kids cannot stop working on them, that they ask to continue working on them at recess, that they they're just fighting to find the best answer. Like that was not the experience that early Robert had. Ro early Robert was just, you know, do these worksheets with riddles at the bottom. And then I, I'm kind of mortified by that. But I also have to acknowledge that that was part of the journey it took me to get here to realize that this is something we really need for our students. And I think it's awesome that you're transparent about that journey, because like you said, many of us start the way that we were taught. I started the way that I was taught. I started off with 250 question computer science tests that kids didn't even remember the next day. And now kids can talk to me years and years later about the projects we do because they're so rich and authentic. Many years later, the projects meant something. They understood what they were doing. It was not rote memorization. Yeah, totally. Okay, so we are finishing up now. Uh, tell us a little bit about your book that's coming out. Yeah, so my book is coming out really soon. Um, it's for student. I mean, if you've used an open middle problem or if you've never even seen one, it'll tell you basically how to pick a problem, how to prepare for it, how to facilitate the conversation, what to do if it doesn't go the way you expect, and even really how to make some of your own. I think it's really great for teachers who want to take this even further. And I'd hope you uh, would take a check, uh, take some time to check it out. Okay, so it's Open Middle Math. Robert Kaplinsky, thanks for this conversation. And I think it's incredible for folks to see that math can be interesting and exciting. And, you know, when math truly got exciting for me, it was actually in algebra. And my dad was a farmer and he started showing me how to use algebra to solve real world farm problems. So when I understood it was real world, it just opened up the whole world of math to me and was so much more exciting. And we want to make it real because math can be exciting. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, Vicki. Today's sponsor is the U.S. Toyota Dream Car Art Contest. It opens November 1st, 2019 through January 31st, 2020. It's for youth ages 4 through 15 in the United States. In the U.S. Toyota Dream Car Art Contest, 
students are invited to submit hand-drawn artwork answering this question. If you could design a car to make the world a better place, what would it look like? Teachers can also download a free standards-aligned lesson plans on car design that includes both STEM concepts and art. That makes this an excellent cross-curricular project. Visit www.toyotadreamcarusa.com forward slash coolcat. There you can download artwork guidelines, official rules, an entry form, and the lesson plan to prepare your Toyota Dream Car USA artwork submissions today. Remember, that's toyotadreamcarusa.com forward slash coolcat. So today is your challenge to take a look at the show notes and look at some of these open math problems and follow some of the concepts of trying to see how students are solving the problem and having those conversations in your classroom. Then share and reflect with other math teachers so you can integrate this into the pedagogy of your classroom. 